Good morning again and welcome to our Sunday morning worship. It's good to be together uh, as we come to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Um, you can follow along our service of morning prayer beginning on page one of the bulletin or page 80 of the Book of Common Prayer. The hour is coming and now is when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Such, for such the Father seeks to worship him. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Let us join together in Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory is his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth, O offspring of Abraham his servant, of children of Jacob his chosen. Israel came into Egypt, and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies, whose hearts he turned, so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson is a reading from the letter of Paul to the apostle, the apostle to the church in Rome. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take that for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. We'll now say Canticle 12 together, 
song of creation. Glorify the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let the people of God glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O priests and servants of the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Glorify the Lord, O spirits and souls of the righteous. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. You that are holy and humble of heart, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Let us glorify the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. In the firmament of his power, glorify the Lord. Praise him and highly exalt him forever. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any of you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, 
There are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us say together Canticle 16, the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. I thought I would uh, pull off a neat trick and just pull up my sermon on email, but uh, the network is down, and so so my notes have disappeared as well. You'll forgive me if I, uh, I'm just going to wing this one. Um, there we go. But we had this, this lesson, the, the get me behind me Satan one, and it's important that we connect it with the one that we had last week. It was just a few verses ago in the gospel. We've had seven days to forget kind of the episode that we heard about last week where um, Jesus said, who do people say that I am? Who do you say that I am? And we get Peter's response. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And uh, Jesus says, you're right. That's a gift from heaven that you, you were able to say that and you're able to unlock uh, the mysteries of heaven, the gates of heaven with that. And I'm entrusting you with my authority as a result. And he gives them this new nickname, like sometimes young guys do when they're hanging out with their friends. Uh, he calls him Rock, Rocky, Peter. It means the same in just about any language. And he says, on this rock, I'm going to build my church. The idea is that it's a foundation stone shaped uh, by God from before creation so that this new mystery could be brought forth. And that's very often how many Christians think of Peter to this day. But the second part of that conversation, the one that we got this morning, that follows almost immediately on its heels, is a very different setup, isn't it? Peter is um, listening to what it is that Jesus has to say about being the Messiah. He's, he's hearing what it is that, that this actually means. He's listening to what, uh, not so much what Jesus' plan is, but what Jesus himself has discovered he must do. He has to go to Jerusalem, to the capital city. He has to confront the powers that be. And all along the way, there are going to be signs and wonders that far exceed anything that anybody could have expected would have happened when the Messiah came. And it will involve the cross. And Peter hears all of this, and he goes, God forbid it, not at all. You just made me your rock, let me be your rock. I'm your right-hand guy, I'm gonna make sure that None of this stuff you're talking about happens. No suffering will come to you. I'll take it all on myself. And Peter gets a new nickname, doesn't he? Not as kind a nickname. Satan. Ooh, that seems kind of harsh, doesn't it? 
Of course, after 2,000 years of Christian tre uh, training, we have a slightly different view of Satan, perhaps, than, uh, than Peter did uh, when this was mentioned, maybe even different from what Jesus thought it was. Not so much, you know, the, the divine uh, uh, adversary uh, as the district attorney in heaven's court, uh, the one who brings charges, the one who accuses. That's what Satan means, after all. The one who, uh, like, uh, who doesn't care so much about uh, guilt or innocence as he cares that he wins the case and so presses the charges with all of his might. The one that tries to obfuscate and, and dissuade from the track. That's what, what uh, Jesus calls Peter here, the accuser. It takes us back to the other time in Matthew's gospel. We've heard about Satan directly, and that's during the temptation of Jesus. And we hear about him again at the crucifixion. And again, that's an episode of temptation for Jesus. Not to do the thing that God has called him to do, but to take the easier path. To think in worldly and uh, empire-based terms rather than the terms of the kingdom. And he sees Peter as trying to dissuade him from that and says, no, 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 that's not right. You can't dissuade me. You can't tempt me from this path. Not one of my best friends. Get behind me where you're following me, not trying to lead me astray. Get back into your rightful place as a disciple and let me show you what it is that God has in store. The rebuke takes on a slightly different tone when we think about it in all those terms. But all throughout the Bible, we have these stories uh, of people whom God has called to lay aside the easy path a comfortable life, a normal way of doing things, and instead to live their lives in a way that lays down their life for the benefit of the whole of God's people. We hear about it from Abraham, Noah, Moses, a whole bunch of the prophets, the judges. The Old Testament is practically full of them. The New Testament is too, but in a slightly different light. God doesn't ask Jesus anything different. It's the same story. Jesus can't just go and lead an ordinary life and forget this vocation that God has given him. He has to go on this, this path. All along, the path that the disciples have been following has been full of signs and wonders and miracles and teachings that point them to the unmistakable truth that Jesus is who he says he is, the Son of God. And he promises that he's going to show them a miracle yet that far surpasses anything that they could have hoped for or expected. And here he gives them a sneak preview. And what is it? It's the cross. I don't take that news particularly any better than Peter did. I would much rather that Jesus called me to a, a nice, comfortable uh, life and easy living someplace where I could be assured and safe and secure. But instead, the call is the same. The call to all of us is to leave behind those normal things and instead to give of our substance until it hurts, to lay down our lives for the benefit of one another, to surrender. This is uh, what Paul is encouraging his congregation in Rome that he hasn't even met yet to do, to be reconciled to one another and to lay down their lives, uh, to give up that worldly way of thinking and to allow the transformation of the mind that Jesus brings to actually work. It's something that we constantly slip from, something we're not terribly good at, because all around us, well, a world is full of temptations, isn't it? Lots of rabbit holes we could run down that are full of diversions and pleasures and temptations galore. We slip back into our way of, of uh, normal way of doing things, just like Peter did, almost instantly. But Jesus reminds us, maybe not so much with a rebuke as with the gentle reminder of the example of the fellowship he sent us, set us in the midst of, that that's not the path we're called to follow. It's not something that we can ever do alone, that surrender. That's why Jesus brought us together in this community, made this place safe, set us apart as a people who could dedicate themselves to reminding one another that this is the way we ought to be living gently and lovingly. Forget about worldly success, fame, grandeur, fortune. 
forget about excessive comfort. Forget about the control that you feel like you have over your life. Instead, instead of just looking to yourself and your own comforts, open your eyes and look around you. Or rather, let Jesus open your eyes and show you that in the faces, masked though they may be, uh, of the people that we're set in the midst of, we are given the very pattern and model for growing closer to God. We're lifted up when we've fallen. We're given healing when we're, when we're ill. We're given encouragement and support when uh, we're grieving and when we need it the most. And that is the thing that makes it possible for us to, uh, with Jesus, overcome the world, overcome this temptation to satanic, ac accusatory ways, ways that lead the entire human race into a path of self-service rather than uh, sacrifice, which is the example that Jesus gives us. You know, the sacraments that so often make up our, the, the foundation of our common life together, they still do, even though we've not been able to, sac uh, to celebrate them. They're all founded on this reality that Jesus is still in our midst and still touching us and still calling us. And they all, they all have that element of sacrifice. Not that we're killing something, not that we're getting rid of something, like we talk about a sacrifice play in baseball or something like that. But the word literally means to make holy, to give it to God. And God's mission in Jesus is to show us that nothing that is truly alive in him can ever really be dead. What we're given in that sacramental life together is the very touch of Jesus in our midst, calling us together. And it's that that we're hoping and working towards today is, is a, a means, a pattern by which we can get back to that that celebration, that rightful place of sacrifice. Again, not, not killing, not getting rid of, but making holy, physically holy in our midst as the, as the core of our worship. When we do that, when we offer ourselves to God in that way, uh, which is kind of wrapped up in our Eucharistic worship and a little bit less in our morning prayer, that reminder that, that we take everything we do, every moment, and offer them to God, um, not because we're intending that we're going to be perfect during those times, but because we would like to invite God in and transform all of those moments and bring his kingdom a little bit closer. That transformation comes uh, when uh, we surrender, when we give up our ideas, our rushing in Peter nature that says, Lord, not your way, my way. God is just gracious enough that he will say, okay, have it your way. You can experiment with it this time. I know I'll get my way in the end, but better for all of us, better for my soul, better for our community if we offer that sacrifice and, and let God transform our lives. And he'll do it just as often as we let him. That's why we need to remind ourselves to do that because we're a forgetful folk. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us continue morning prayer on page four of the bulletin as we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, who is conceived by the power of the Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Rob, our bishop, for Mike, Greg, and Nancy, our clergy, and for all the holy people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Donald, our president, Chris, our governor, Jim, our mayor, for the leaders of the nations, and for all who have been entrusted with authority over others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the city of Nashua and for everyone who lives and works here, that we may live in peace and in the service of the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. 
for those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have entrusted themselves to our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, Lord. Peace be with you. Peace, everyone. Peace be with you. Peace to all of you. Peace. 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 Well, good morning to you, one and all. What a delight it is to see you, uh, both virtually and in person this morning. Thank you all for joining us for worship. We conclude our, our worship this morning by joining together in the general thanksgiving, which is on page seven of your leaflet or on page uh, 126 in the Book of Common Prayer, I believe. 125, then. You'll get the evening prayer version of it, not the morning prayer version, sorry. But it's the same prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and for all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such thanks that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. To God.